Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxart Gardening. Today is our week six garden tour and I know I say this every week but oh my gosh the garden has grown so much. I am just in shock at how good this garden is doing but I cannot wait to show you guys. So for those of you who don't know, I am here in South Carolina. This is zone 7B, so I'm in the upstate. And I started this garden at my new house in ground, and I have documented the whole process. And I give a garden tour every single week to show you guys what's going on in the garden, some of the things that are working and not working so well for me, um, and just kind of chat about how everything is progressing. The first thing I always show you guys is this line of experimental squash. So what I did was I just dug holes in the middle of the ground and did not till, did not mow any of the grass around it or anything, and I have just kind of let these seeds exist within the natural lawn biome. And they are doing okay, but I will say they are not doing great. They are pretty small squash for being seven weeks old now because I planted this earlier than the other garden and the only one that's produced fruit for me is this zucchini plant which actually has opened its flower on its second oh this is also a good opportunity to show you guys what squash bugs look like if you'll see those right in there kind of looks like they're mating I should come back later and get them before they start laying eggs. Squash bug eggs will show up on the underneath side of your leaf. These are yellow eggs, so these are not squash bug eggs. Squash bug eggs are kind of reddish brown, um, but you can check usually and they will be down in the crooks of your leaves. And I dealt with squash bugs last year and they were a nightmare. So the sooner you can deal with them, pick them off your plants, pick all the eggs off your plants, the better. Do not wait, see a squash bug, squash it. <laughs> there is one baby fruit over here that I'm seeing. I think this might be a butternut baby. So maybe I will get a winter squash out of this plant. Just one. Maybe. So even though the main attraction is obviously the arch, I'm gonna do things in the right order so nobody gets confused and we're going to start on the right side of the garden with the sunflowers and the tomatoes and yesterday i was looking at this marigold and i'm just amazed by how large the flowers are i think normally my marigold flowers get to be about that big and these are just looking so big and healthy and beautiful um so with the sunflowers they are getting really close to flowering. You can kind of look and see that it's starting to make its flower head, which is exciting. Can't wait to have gorgeous sunflowers. And the tomatoes are just really blowing up. We have gorgeous, gorgeous tomatoes getting ready to ripen up all over these plants. And the, the favorite ones, of course, are these cute ones that are like, I don't know what shape to call that, kind of pear shaped. They're so cute. Something I want to show you guys is, you see this? This is tomato hornworm poop. Looking for the poop is way easier than looking for the actual tomato hornworms because they blend in so well with the plant. So if you can find some poop, then you have like a, a smaller area to search for the actual tomato hornworm. And if you aren't aware, tomato hornworms show up on tomatoes. They can also show up on other plants. I've had pepper plants destroyed by these, but they are basically caterpillars of a species of moth that I can't remember off the top of my head. And they eat like crazy. They get huge. And if you don't find them, they will decimate an entire plant in a day or two. So every day I come out here now and I am looking for these things. And I think this is our culprit. He's already gotten pretty big. You can see the horn on one end, thus tomato hornworm. And you can kind of see this branch that he's on. He's already eaten all of the front of it off. 
but he hasn't done too badly. I've caught him early. So I am just going to sacrifice this branch because I don't really like actually squishing these things. And he is going to get thrown very far away. Also in the tomato area, I have planted just a couple of runner beans just to see how they do intercropped with the tomatoes and given the trellis. I haven't seen any flowers go on this guy yet, but he's looking pretty healthy. So, so far so good on that. And just wow at this pepper patch. I mean, my goodness, they are gorgeous especially this variegated one. I thought it was a buena mulata, but it turns out I planted another jigsaw pepper. So you can see all the little fruits. And actually this is the same as my single seed challenge plant, except it has grown up outside. And I can actually tell that some of the fruits are larger than the ones on my plant inside, which makes sense because the one inside is in a teeny tiny little pot. Mm, what was I just saying about tomato hornworms on oh, pepper plants? Yep. You gotta check for them, especially if you start seeing damage like this. And also, dare poop. But also, can we just take a second to look at these? These Lisa peppers are gorgeous and huge, and I cannot wait to harvest them. Let's see other notable peppers. We have the Criolla di Colchina coming in. We have all these gorgeous Oda peppers coming in. I've got a banana pino down there. An absolutely gorgeous marigold. This is the Etuda bell pepper. The absolutely massive Edgvarsky pepper. Wow, the garden kind of looks like a mess, but it's it's an alive mess. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Somebody commented on my video last week, if your garden looks perfect, you're not doing it right. Like my row of beans that runs into the tomato row because I can't make a straight line. <laughs> but these have been flowering and putting on little baby beans. And they are purple teepee beans, most of them. Some of them are blue lake bush farther on up. Um, but these have just been making the most gorgeous purple flowers. And kind of flopping over as well. But you can never get your plants to stand up straight. Like, oh, look at that. That's the biggest bean I've seen yet. Yeah, your plants almost never stand up straight the way you want them to. So if you're getting all your plants to stand up straight without support, like kudos to you. If I wanted to stake up every single one of these bush beans, that would be a lot of work. And also it doesn't need it. They are just fine kind of leaning over. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is the top of a pumpkin vine that is weaving its way into the bean patch from all the way over there. Goodness. Oh, and we absolutely cannot forget to look at the eggplant flowers. These guys are finally flowering and I hope they start setting fruit, but their flowers are just gorgeous. I was thinking these things were kind of slowing down in growth, which they're still growing, but I do think they are growing slower because they were putting energy instead of into getting taller into making flowers. Which makes sense, right? When you only have a limited amount of energy, you gotta decide where you're gonna put it. Oh my goodness! That is the first baby eggplant. It's gonna be purple stripey. What kind is this one? This one is Antigua. So, looking forward to those so much. Oh, and I just found something else interesting to show you. I did not set it up to be this um, easy to compare, but so this marigold I got from the store and I planted it and this marigold I planted from seed and you can see this one is short Putting on a lot of flowers and this one just keeps getting taller and fatter 
Um, it is a different variety for sure. Um, but I haven't even seen it try to put on flowers yet. And I just think that's so interesting that all the ones basically that I have planted from seed are super tall and have super fat stems. And all the ones from the store are staying small and bushing out. Whew, I am getting shiny. It is pretty hot out here, but are you ready to follow me into the tunnel? So this is exactly what I wanted it to be. The beans have reached the top of the trellis. Everything is lush and filling out. And the only thing left is for it to actually put on beans to hang down from the trellis and look super cool and also kind of a little alien. I think I saw a flower. Yes, I did. Okay, it's all the way down here. These are noodle bean flowers. Absolutely gorgeous. And oh, you'll also notice the pumpkin is trying to climb this trellis too. It has also invaded all of my walking space and is trying to climb the trellis over here as well and has invaded this walking space and I am letting it. Mostly because um, I kind of like having a wild garden. I don't want to spend all my time trying to prune everything until it like stays in the exact place where it's supposed to be. Now I will prune for health and I will prune if this becomes unwalkable, but right now I can easily step over my pumpkins and look at my cucumbers, which are equally wild. They have decided they like this side of the trellis. Everybody's kind of congregating over there and leaving all of this area unused, which I'm trying to kind of train them that way. But there's only so much you can do. And cucumbers especially, they don't climb like the beans do. Hold up, let me show you. So just look at this and how it just wraps itself really neatly around and around. I didn't do that. Beans did that. They just wrapped themselves around. But the cucumbers, cucumbers have their little tendrils that they put out to hold on and because they're not wrapping themselves around the trellis a lot of times their offshoots end up not being able to grab on and so at this point it's your job to kind of pull them back towards the trellis best you can and hook them on so that their little tendrils can grab on. This cucumber is so dense some of its leaves are starting to look like this and so the worst ones I have been pruning off actually I pruned off quite a few leaves I know you can't tell because it's so dense but basically I'm just pruning for airflow in these cucumbers and trying to make sure that flowers are accessible to pollinators look at that picked one of these the other day I think this one I'll give maybe another day Oh, look back there. There's another one. About to be absolutely swimming in cucumbers. Oh my God. Look at this little bee's butt sticking out of the flower. Oh my goodness. What an absolute cutie. So also while we're under here, you can kind of see the leaves that are on the underside are wilting and turning colors and plant doesn't need them anyway. So I've been pruning a lot of that stuff off. Oh my goodness. More baby cucumbers. So I'm about to be swimming in cucumbers, as I said. So shoot me your favorite cucumber recipes. I'm going to pickle a lot of them and I'm gonna just chop up a bunch of them. But if you have anything interesting to do with cucumbers, let me know about it. I would love to try it out. And this wind chime is pretty and all, but I cannot tell you how many times I have hit my head on it because I was bending over looking at a plant and then I stood up and just right into the wind chime. My zinnias are starting to bloom. They are a mix of colors so every bloom is a surprise. And I want to show you my biggest accomplishment this week which is finally trellising this tomato jungle. What I've done is I've just taken two stakes on either end and I've just been stringing string between them and kind of propping up my tomatoes on that. I also had to uh, prune back a fair bit because these were 
like just vining all over everywhere. And I pruned most of them down to at least one or two single stems. So looking good so far. It'll take them a little while to kind of straighten out and uh, point their leaves the correct directions. And it felt a little bad cutting off some branches that had flowers on them, but it's really for the overall health of the plant to keep them pruned down, keep them aerated so that they don't develop any sickness on their leaves and they can actually produce the fruit for you that you want. And these plants are putting on fruit. They're just a little behind the other ones because of the deer and the pruning. Oh, look, yep, little babies and a mushroom, bonus mushroom. This is also another space that another pumpkin is invading. And again, I'm going to just let it. Most of the, the tomatoes should get tall enough to where they are above where the pumpkin is growing anyway. So this isn't really gonna choke them out in any way. In a couple of weeks, you'll see I'll have pruned off all these lower branches and the pumpkin will have plenty of room and the tomatoes will have plenty of room. Whoa, what is that? I've never seen one of those before. If you know what it is, let me know. Gosh, I'm really loving these zinnia blossoms. They just look like candy in the garden, don't they? Just wow. I had to come all the way up here just to show you guys the massive scale of this pumpkin. You see the little tendril right there? Goes all the way. And I think the edge of this particular plant is right about there. Just, <laughs> it's just huge. And there is a little baby pumpkin, at least one. That's the one that I have seen. I'm sure there's more somewhere in this tall grass that I can't mow because the pumpkin is taking over the yard. So next to the pumpkin is a zucchini. And then next to the zucchini is what I think is probably a golden acorn squash. You can see it down there. And also you can see little bees in the flowers. So cute. But yeah, I think that this is a golden acorn squash. I saved seeds from a squash I bought at the store, which immediately means that there's a chance that it was cross-pollinated with something or was an unstable F1 hybrid that whatever grower was growing for the store. And so when you save seeds like that, you are kind of gambling <laughs> as to what it is you're going to get, um, which is why I think I have acorn squash on a bushing squash plant. That is the only seed I have that looks like it could be anything like the fruit that is coming onto these. And so that is my guess as to what happened is that it was just, you know, cross with something or a little unstable. And this is what we're getting. So on some of my plants, I am seeing damage like this. And I think these are vine borers. I said last week, didn't I? I've never dealt with vine borers. Well, now I have, maybe. Um, if you recognize this damage, let me know because the internet did not have the best pictures for me. I looked and it was like a little hard to tell if this is a vine borer or if this is some sort of infection. I'm just not entirely sure. This plant in particular is not doing hot. And I tried covering the stem up with extra dirt to help promote rooting, but you can see it's kind of just, it looks like it's rotting. It's getting squishy. Um, and since this is a bushing type, it will not be vining out to put out extra roots. So it might just die. And, you know, I have plenty of zucchinis, that's okay. But I would like to know what is happening so that I can work on preventing it. A bonus though, is that it's much easier to see these squash. They are looking like golden acorn squash, aren't they? Here's another one of those super tall marigolds that is just getting taller and not flowering. The last thing to look at over here is the little corn patch. It's doing really well. I mean, it looks healthy. There's not really damage on it. Pumpkin, of course, is invading it, but it looks healthy. It's getting strong stalks, growing at a reasonable rate. So I might have corn this year. That's exciting. I hope you're not getting tired of slow pans of the garden from every angle because I certainly am not.
this is the view from my seat where I get to sit and watch the garden. And I thought that I would sit here more, but there's this crack, which this chair was never mine. It was just left behind by the previous person who was in my house. And this crack digs right into my leg every time that I come to sit in this chair. So I think it's time to get a new garden chair. So alternatively, I just kind of sit like this and watch the garden and wait for the bugs to start attacking me, which is a little unfortunate because this is such a pretty view. What's your favorite part of the garden? Those of you who've been following along, what would make your heart sing if this was your garden? What would you look at the most and be the most proud of? For me, it is 100% the trellises. I just, they, they are turning out exactly the way that I wanted them to. They are beautiful and lush and they shade me when I walk through them. I just can't get over how pretty they are. I'm so happy that I went through the trouble of figuring out how to get cattle panels and drive tea posts and put them up. It was so worth it. Okay, last little bit to show you is the container garden. This is when I planted a lot of stuff because I wasn't sure what was happening with the move and what kind of room I would have and what kind of time I would have. And they are growing great. Most of these, I actually don't know what they are. This one I do know is a fish pepper, but like this one, I do not know. And this one, I also do not know, but we will be finding out when they ripen. We will find out together what the heck I planted. Spider guardian. And bumblebee. I just love the wildlife. Yes, even the wasps. They are pollinators and they are predators. And wasps are just as much a guardian of your garden as spiders are. Wasps are so essential for getting some of those pests taken care of, under control. Please don't kill your wasps. I know that they're annoying. I know that you don't like having them near your house, but they are so good for your garden. And contrary to popular belief, they're actually pretty peaceful. Mostly it's the social wasps that will come out and attack you because you're near their nest. But solitary wasps actually are not very aggressive at all. If you happen to want to learn more about wasps, I just listened to an episode of this podcast. The podcast is Ologies, and they every week Allie brings on a ologist, a scientist, and has them talk in depth about what they do. And a couple weeks ago, it was wasps. So if you want to learn about that, go check out that podcast. I think I just have one cayenne plant right now, and it's doing great. Oh, look at this. A red cayenne is coming on. It'll be done soon. And the rest of these will follow suit soon, probably. This is the Tabasco plant that I saved over the winter. And a few of its peppers, whoop, this one, are actually quite large for Tabasco. And these will be really pretty when they ripen. I don't know if you've ever seen it. So they're already sticking up straight. And then they're gonna be different shades of orange and red as they start to ripen. So from a distance, it will kind of look like a flowering plant. And I cannot for the life of me keep up with my basil. It's constantly trying to flower and I am constantly picking it and making pesto. Mm -hmm. And then it's constantly trying to flower. I am gonna have so much pesto stored for this winter. I'm gonna have to start giving it away. There's so much. Oh my goodness, isn't that gorgeous? I love things that are growing in the garden that are growing not the color that they're supposed to be. <laughs> oh, this plant, the variegation, 
the creaminess. It's so pretty. Okay, so the last thing to do is to look at these indoor peppers. This one is the Aji Chaparita. These peppers are teeny tiny. And um, I learned recently, after my partner munched one, his mouth was on fire. And I told him maybe you shouldn't do that, but he did, as boys do. And I looked up later that the Scoville rating is between 30,000 and 100,000. So a mild one of these is as spicy as a cayenne. So <laughs> these itty bitty peppers really do pack a punch. So right next to the tiny punch is the single seed challenge pepper that I've been growing. This is my indoor jigsaw pepper. And I've been using a few of these ripe peppers to throw into curry recently um, because I'm waiting on tomatoes to come in to make salsa. But this plant is doing great. I wonder if it will get bigger before it puts on a second flush. But we'll see. It is restricted to this small pot size. All right, guys, that is all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are new here, I put out a garden tour every Wednesday and sometimes videos in between if the timing works out. But um, thank you guys for your kind comments every week. It's just more kindness poured out at me. So thank you guys so much. And until next time, I wish you all happy gardening.